Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. From Peterson's, I'm Taylor Sienkiewicz, and you're listening to You Have a Cool Job, a podcast highlighting those who took their profession in a unique direction and what they did to get there. On this week's episode of You Have a Cool Job, we talk to the sister owners of Zoo Chateau, Keely and Keaton Crawford. Zoo Chateau is a private zoo in Golden, Colorado, that houses rescue animals and ambassador animals of all shapes and sizes. Zoo Chateau features fun ways to get involved with the animals, most famously, kangaroo yoga. I asked the duo what inspired them to get the project of Zoo Chateau started. So Keely, who mainly functions as the animal caretaker, started things off. I've always had a passion for animals, like, and it all started with horses. So I, we had grown up showing horses and we had some old retired um, horses that kind of needed a place to land after their showing careers. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up buying some land down about two miles from our house. And it kind of just slowly expanded from that, like, um... We had some friends in the horse industry that had some kangaroos and some giant tortoises and we went and met them and kind of started doing some research and we're like, how can we kind of incorporate this into our retired horses? And I've always had such a passion for rescuing animals that I was like, let's draw in that element. Let's see um, how we can like make a difference and (laughs) do things for the animals like in our community that kind of need need a place to land. So... um, It kind of just has slowly been a rolling ball of like expanding and a big part of what we want to do is educate people on rescuing animals. So, um, it's, it's, it's ever growing and evolving, but (laughs) we, uh, that's kind of how it started was we got, we bought, we got our first, Keaton and I actually bought our first horse with our allowance money when we were five and six years old. Oh, so wow. I have no idea how we made that much money by the time. <laughs> yes, but whatever. I'm not See, I tried it. to do that. It did not work out. <laughs> I'm not questioning yeah. it. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so do you two own this property then, or is it your family's property? Um, so it's under our business at this point. So mm-hmm. it's under all four of our family's names. Okay. So we each kind of have a 25% stake in the property. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And do you mind if I ask how old you both are? Yeah, I'm 25. I'm 24. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so great. Yeah, you're so young and doing this. Um, so what do you love to teach people? I know you mentioned you like to educate people. So what do you want to tell them? Like, what's your message for people about these rescue Yeah. Animals? I mean, first and foremost is, like, when you're thinking of adding a new pet to your family, um, kind of do some research. See how much... Um, monetarily it might cost, um, like kind of what the day-to-day things of taking care of it is, making sure that you, with whatever else is going on in your life, really feel that you can provide for that animal for the rest of its life. We're really believers in kind of forever homes. So um, when you take in an animal, you're really making that commitment to them and um, believing that you can do that for the rest of their lives. Um, And so from there, looking to your local shelters, kind of trying to add your family member that way. There's um, so many animals out there that need a home. And a lot of people think to kind of go for dogs and cats, Mm -hmm. but um, literally you can find almost any animal you would like at a a shelter. Um, We at our property have guinea pigs, rats, rabbits, horses that are all rescued. So you really can kind of find almost anything that you want from a shelter. So and then we found that they're almost more grateful because they've kind of seen the other side of life. And so when they have someone that loves them, like they're so loyal and willing to want to hang out and be your friend. And you, you definitely have some different behavioral things sometimes that you deal with because of that past life. But I think it just kind of adds to their character and who they are. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you love them even more for it. Yes. <laughs> 
I think it's cool um, with with her research and stuff. She's kind of the one that's like the foundation for the rescue side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we talk a lot about the rescue and responsibility. If you're going to get one from the, you know, obviously we advocate for going to the shelters first. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be our our first place that we look if we need another animal that we're in contact with. If they have one that's in severe need, they're going to contact us and stuff. So we've had one of our rabbits came from, you know, he was going to be euthanized unless we we took him. And so we were like, wait, 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 of course. (laughs) Yeah. So we had six rabbits instead of five. (laughs) Um, But just the responsibility side of it, um, if you are going to get one, doing the research, making sure that, you know, the breeders are reputable, that they're not overbreeding, things like that. Some of our animals have come from breeders and we just do that kind of base research and make sure. um, And then, yeah, just educating on what it kind of takes. I mean, you couldn't just put a kangaroo in a backyard. It's going to be a very different animal than like the the dogs and stuff like that. Um, One of my favorite things that she's kind of like dug into a little bit more is how the rabbits are, you know, people will get pets around uh, Easter time and because it's, you know, everything. And then all of a sudden they go and they just like take the, the rabbits to the shelters right after. And so there's, you know, educating people on, on not necessarily getting a rabbit because they're not as easy to take care of. Yeah. yeah. Rabbits in particular are kind of the most exotic pet that you can get without them being considered exotic. So a lot of vets don't know how to take care of them. <coughs> Um, they're really not very personable animals. <laughs> they're adorable and they're so much fun to watch, but they're really not cuddly because they are such a prey animal. They Their first instinct is to run. So um, a lot of our time spent in the rabbits is kind of watching them and like seeing them interact and do things. They love to be, you know, their little treats, they'll come up and get those. But I mean, a lot of people just don't really think about rabbits being so exotic and they want to kind of just put them in a cage yeah. where they're really meant to be a rat like in a bigger space and they are a um, group animal so actually in the wild they live in colonies and have these uh, relationships with other rabbits so it's been really fun to see our rabbits kind of interact with each other and like learn how their hierarchy system works and all that stuff so it's something that I think a lot of people don't think about when it comes to rabbits. Definitely. So what do you two do on an everyday basis then in terms of running the zoo? Yeah. Um, so I live on the property. So I basically every day um, go make sure that everyone is doing well. I have, we have one full-time employee. Um, her name is Megan. And so her and I work really closely with taking care of the animals every day. Um, so it's not all fun and games. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is It is a very cool job because I get to spend, I get to go outside and hang out with animals. But mm-hmm. the majority of my time is spent feeding them and then picking up after them. So <laughs> we have um, 10 or 9 horses and a zonkey and a donkey. And so those probably take up the Wait, majority of our time. A zonkey is a half zebra, <laughs> half donkey. So, Incredible. Yes. <laughs> um, it's a pretty, he looks exactly like that. <laughs> Exactly um, what I'm thinking. Yes. <laughs> Big giant ears. Yes. Yeah. Half stripey. Yeah. <laughs> His legs are completely striped like a zebra. He's pretty adorable. Um, trouble, but pretty adorable. <laughs> uh, and they probably take up the most of my time. Um, mm-hmm. They are grazers, so they're constantly pooping. <laughs> so we're constantly picking up after them. So we have on the property, we have some different barns so like the kangaroos have their own barn with and they and then the guinea pigs and the rats are within right. that um and then we have baby giant tortoises so they have their own barn and then um we have rabbit barn and so it's kind of we just usually start with horses feed them um and then we go on and feed our kangaroos and um, the tortoises and the rabbits, the kangaroos get bottles every morning. Um, and that's, it's soy milk. Basically it's a precautionary measure. If they were to ever get sick, we can put their medicine in the bottles. Mm. Um, so that's, that's always one of the highlights of the day. You're going to go yeah. sit and bottle down a kangaroo. kangaroo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and then I love letting the kangaroos out. So I usually get up around six o'clock in the morning and, um, wander out around, you know, seven after I, we have some barn cats that we've rescued and they kind of have wandered in my apartment at this point. So, <laughs> um, I usually take care of them and then let the kangaroos out because the kangaroos are crepuscular, which is their most active at dusk and dawn. So they mm-hmm. love the morning to be out and out, out and about, and they have about a quarter of an acre to themselves. So, um, 
that's always fun because you let them out and they usually go lay under their um, their trees or lay out and um, do that. So yeah, I mean, basically, I spend most of my day just kind of hanging out with them, making sure they're healthy, happy, um, fed, picked up after. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on days that we have people come into the property, we have usually about an hour to an hour and a half of interactions to kind of depending on who's there and what's happening. And I get to kind of tell them about the animals, what they're doing, um, uh, what, what kinds they are, where they came from, and then our mission of rescuing. Then Keaton jumped in. My side is um, more on the admin and marketing. Um, so I do a lot of, so we run our um, house rentals through Airbnb and VRBO. So I do a lot of that. Um, and then we do our day visits through Eventbrite. So all of those different things, um, running the email, I guess it's like a little bit less cool than getting to bottle feed kangaroos every morning. But important. But parts. it is important. Right. And it's really cool to be kind of behind it and and pushing out our missions and stuff. So it's really cool to be working on the website and adding new things if we have new animals or new events and and whatnot. Um, And then I think my favorite part about it is that I get to do a lot of the yoga classes. So we call, we have one person in the barn at all time, like during the yoga classes. Mm -hmm. We'll call it the referee. (laughs) So, <laughs> gotta have our puns, of right. course. Um, so yeah, I get a I get to be in charge of all of our yoga instructors. We've got five right now. They kind of trade off. We do two classes per week, so that's fun. I get to kind of do the scheduling and and put everything together in order to get people onto the property um, and and doing the yoga classes with the kangaroos. And I get to actually be in there, which is it's really amazing to see people's reactions to seeing the animals and stuff. Especially people don't get to hang out with kangaroos very much. I mean, nope. you get to see them at the Denver Zoo from a little ways away, and they're usually, you know, laying down or something. Um, so to get to, like, sit on a mat and reach your hand out and touch a kangaroo is right. one of the coolest things, like, people's reaction to it. Mm-hmm. So I, I get to do a more of the people side of the business, which I yeah. enjoy a lot. I love going to hang out with the animals as well, and I'll help out sometimes with that stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, nice for me, I get to kind of do it at remotely a lot when I'm yeah. not like at the actual yoga classes. So. Right. How do those yoga classes work? Like how do the kangaroos act, interact with people while yeah. people are doing yoga? No, it's actually really great. It feels like, you know, when people first go in the kangaroo barn, it's this like the energy level is definitely there mm-hmm. because they're seeing a kangaroo for the first time. And right. Like, like right before you walk in the barn, you're always like, okay, the calmer that you are, <laughs> the calmer, calmer that they will be. Mm-hmm. And so we have to kind of remind people of that. But as soon as they walk in, it's like, People are getting their phones out and they're taking pictures and they're like, oh my gosh, look at the kangaroos. Yeah. And it's really cool. But as soon as they sit down on those mats mm-hmm. and, you know, they're like instructed to take a few deep breaths and stuff, mm-hmm. it just, it feels like the room just calms down yeah. and it's very zen in there and the kangaroos can feel it. They, mm-hmm. you know, they'll kind of hop around and stuff. And a lot of the times they'll even like, they'll come up to people and Bindi, our female, she loves to give little kisses to people. And <laughs> so she absolutely, especially if you're sweaty. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's the perfect environment yeah. for that. <laughs> yep, a little exercise, get a little sweaty, get some some kanga kisses. <laughs> so yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's it's funny. We've had people asking, "What's the point of it?" You know, they're not. It's not going to be like goat yoga. And they're not going to jump on your back or anything like that. Yeah. But they'll interact with you, and it is. It's like you getting into their setting mm-hmm. instead of you know a traditional zoo is going to be you looking from the outside of a cage mm-hmm. or a, an enclosure or something. But with ours, you could actually go in with them and interact with them. The kangaroos have such inter- interesting anatomy, you know, with that big long toe in the middle of their yeah. back legs and their big tail and stuff. So people actually get to see it so much closer and interact with them. And it's funny, I think the idea came about and then as soon as we kept doing it, people's experience with yoga is a lot different than just the granola feeding. Like it's cool for yeah. people to to get to interact with them. They'll get, you know, their selfies and stuff like that with just the granola. But I think in terms of just like taking a breath and just being like being aware of where you are you're like Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on a mat in a barn with kangaroos right and it's like it's one of those moments where people are like what 
oh my gosh, like this is yeah. where I'm at right now. So I think it makes people a little bit more aware of their surroundings and pay attention a little bit more. I think when you do like the animal interactions and stuff, you can get caught up in, you know, how many photos can I take? Right. Can I get that perfect shot? We actually don't let people have their phones during the yoga class mm-hmm. just to make sure like we have, we have the referee walking around yeah. taking photos. So we're still documenting it, but they get a focus on, on being in the moment. I think it, it makes people step away from, you know, technology and, and <laughs> right. stuff like that. And, just, and kind of be real yoga yeah. instead mm-hmm. of, I mean, like it's a different yoga, but yeah. you're not trying, like she was saying, trying to get that, that perfect picture or document what you're doing. You're actually enjoying the experience of it. Mm-hmm. We'll get back to Keaton and Keely's story right after this. Are you searching for the right college, grad school, or trade school to fit your needs? Or are you studying for those entrance exams you need a good score on? Peterson's has you covered. With advanced college and scholarship search functions, test prep for everything from the SAT to the MCAT to the firefighter exams and tons of free resources on our blog, Peterson's helps you find, get in, and pay for school, plus much more. Visit petersons.com today. And now back to the show. Keely and Keaton shared how the trend of animal yoga allows people to get involved with the animals in their space. But it also brings people to Zoo Chateau, which allows the Crawfords to open up the conversation about their mission. Keely shared the messages she feels people are able to take away. It's been really cool to see the response and we're ever changing kind of like how we approach it as we learn more about how, how people kind of respond to it better. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think having the animals that are rescued and kind of telling their stories of how they got, got here has, has really impacted people and kind of made them, I've had so many people be like, I I never thought to go to a, get a guinea pig from a rescue. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Um, and then on top of it, we're also doing a lot of um, educating on the animals that we have on the property. So we, you know, a lot of kangaroo facts, things like that. Um, and I think I think it's making people kind of think a little bit more about the the care um, and time it takes to take care of an animal. Um, I have, I mean, being the person that lives on the property and is the main caretaker for all the animals. Um, the people that come stay in the house, they see me working every day. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of the time they'll come out and say at the end of their stay and be like, like you, you work so hard at taking care of the animals. It's not just all fun and, and games. Right. Like, um, and I think that is something that when you get a new animal, like it's kind of a, an adrenaline rush, at least mm-hmm. for me. <laughs> like, yeah. And so you, when you have that, you kind of keep wanting it. And so you, it's that idea that, um, taking it's, it's awesome to feel that, but looking into the future of getting an animal, like, do you have enough money to care for it when it's old and needs medication and, um, things like that. That's a big thing with horses is, um, their, their vet bills at the end towards the end of their life is really high. And so, um, I don't know. I think, I think it's been a really good response in terms of people kind of seeing how much work and rescuing and things like that, that kind of need done. I I think, I I don't know if this is going to sound funny, but in terms of we're a very small facility and we have 14 acres, but only probably five of it is where the barns and stuff are. The rest of it's kind of field. So especially with people coming on to stay in the house or, or coming even just to do the interactions, we're a lot more, I think, transparent in terms of our work. I think when a zoo is set up, you know, the people are kind of in the middle, the animals are, you know, you see the fronts of their enclosures. Right. Whereas with ours, people get to go wherever the the zookeepers are, you know, Mm -hmm. they're seeing every aspect of our, our work and stuff. They're going to see the buckets where we have to put all the poop and we have to clean and we have to do all those kinds of things. And we're very open about talking about those things. Whereas I feel like the zookeepers at some of the zoos, unless you do more of the hands-on stuff is going to be, you know, they're going to be in the back, they're going to be in the pen with the animals and Mm -hmm. and you're just going to be seeing them. So I think that that makes a huge difference too. I think it opens up the conversation with Mm -hmm. us 
we're willing to talk about how much work it is to, to put into it and yeah. what we're doing and everything. So I think that's one of the main things. And I, I think also just talking about the lifespan of animals and, you know, the vet bills and all these different things that go into it sparks those conversations. It, it, I think it makes people think more yeah. about those things. Like she was saying, like, even if we just plant the seed for someone to be like, oh, wow, they rescued rats and guinea pigs and bunnies and cats and all these different things. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Like, we might not get people to just only rescue. But if we can if we can plant the seed, if we can get people to start thinking about it, mm-hmm. if we can make at least some of an impact, that's going to be that's going to be our goal. You know, if right. we can make an impact on animals and people's opinions of, of what goes into it and how they treat them and all that kinds of stuff. So. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking a lot about animal welfare. It's that mm-hmm. something that you cover a lot is just those animal ethics because people have a lot of issues with that with traditional zoos. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, we actually had a family stay at the zoo and the dad came up to me at the end and he was like, you know, I I was really weary coming here because I never wanted my kids to see an animal in a zoo. And he said, but this was one of the coolest experiences. Like all the animals had so much room and like you could tell how much you guys love them. I mean, we call them part of our family. So they're all family members to us. And, um, like we were kind of talking at the beginning, like the, the um, research that goes into creating their enclosures and places that they live is there's so much work that goes into it that like we try and brush on when people come. Um, and so I think that's that's been a, a, a cool thing to see. Well, and we also are, we're USDA licensed as a, as an exhibitor. Mm -hmm. So we kind of work closely with them as well in terms of making sure everything is, you know, to the book, making sure that, you know, we're following all those rules so that we can set an example as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I think it's just one of those things that we're not going to have the tiny cages for our animals. They're going to, you know, we we had one group come in and they, they called our kangaroos bougie because (laughs) they've got a chandelier in their barn and they've got (laughs) beetle kill pine and it might have gone a little bit overboard but I think that just like speaks to the fact that we want them all of our animals to to be very comfortable Mm -hmm. and and we want to set that standard as well I think that you know we really want to be very careful about educating correctly especially in terms of kangaroos Mm -hmm. because we don't want people to just think that they can have them you know we've like she was saying, there's so much research that goes into it and so many different things Mm -hmm. that, you know, someone can't just decide one day that they're going to get one of those animals. And it does, you have to go through all of the different, you know, Colorado regulations, the USDA regulations, Mm -hmm. all of those different things. Mm -hmm. And then taking it even to the next step of, you know, kind of accepting them into the family a little bit. So, and I think that one of the things that we even, you know, are still learning about and stuff is, um, the fact that we have giant tortoises and they're all dauber tortoises so they can live up to 150 or 200 years. And so we're even making sure that we have a plan in place in terms of, you know, when we're old and have these giant tortoises, <laughs> yeah. it, you know, if we're going to outlive you. Exactly. If we don't have kids or something that we create, we either build up Zoo Chateau in order to make sure that, you know, it's, it's taken care of. It's more of like a foundation type of thing that it continues to, to care for all of these animals, um, you know, past our lives, if that's the case. Um, but just making sure that they go and they're taken care of, like she was saying, like they're forever homes, mm-hmm. even though that looks a little bit different for a rabbit versus a giant tortoise. So right. It's interesting. Before the interview, Keaton talked with me about starting her own podcast about young entrepreneurs like her and her sister. I asked Keaton and Keely about how they see the future of unique businesses like theirs as they are run by the next generation. Something that I think is actually really, really cool is um, outside of our mom, um, the we have four people that basically work there um, and we're all, we have one 19 year old, but other than that, we're all in our twenties. So um, we jokingly say like girl power, it's a girl run, <laughs> yeah. run company. Um, and it, it's really that environment for us, I think creates when, when more young people kind of come and see it, it, it kind of, you see their eyes kind of get big and kind of see what we're doing. And I, I hope that it's making them think that they can go do cool things too, you know, um, and, and make an impact. I mean, I think 
when in today's day and age you see celebrities and things that are happening and you're like, oh, I, I really want to make an impact. But then you kind of get scared because you think so big at first. Mm-hmm. And so when you scale it back, like we, you might not be making a, you know, a world difference, but you're making a world of a difference to that one animal or that one person. And I think focusing on that is, is so important because there is that saying that like you, you can't change you, you can't necessarily change every life, but you can change that life. And that we've seen by rescuing certain animals um, and talking to certain people about animals. So, yeah, I think it's cool. I think what she was saying about our, like, our, our girl gang at the zoo, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I mean, we're not talking about just feeding animals and taking care of them. We're talking about building fences and finishing barns and driving tractors around. Like we're doing everything mm-hmm. at the at the barn. I mean, every single day you'll see one of us climbing on a tractor or going to get, you know, we're going to do tools and we're trying to build things and we're doing all these things. And I think that, you know, especially, you know, not only like that we're in our twenties, but that we are, we're, I mean, we're, I feel at least, I hope we're breaking through some of the, t- the stereotypes of, you know, what, what women are supposed to be doing or whatever. I mean, we're doing these really cool things and it's so fun for us to be able to be involved in that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, look at, you know, all of these, these animals that we've already had an impact on, you know, we're building towards something. And I think that we, you know, we have these big pipes. I think I feed into that a little bit more (laughs) about doing more rescuing and, and more, you know, um, partnerships with different things. I mean, she's got her wildlife warrior shirt on that came from the, um, Irwins in Australia. And we're making a trip out to Australia this December. And we're going to try to talk to them about what they're doing because they're doing it on a little bit higher level than us right now. So I think it's cool. I think it's amazing that I, I think we're doing some really cool stuff right now, but there's going to, we always say stay tuned because there's always going to be something different. You know, we might add on to things. We might, we might do things, but I, I think it does. I mean, whenever someone comes on the property and they see what we're doing, they see us around all the time and working super hard, you know, depending on which aspect of the business it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it is, it's, it's really cool to think when I was in high school or even college or like, like, oh, what am I going to do with my life? You know? And I like now look back on it and I'm like, this is cool. I yeah. never thought that I would be able to do this. Keaton said she feels empowered by not following the status quo and hopes more people see thinking outside of the box as a viable option. We hope you're inspired by Keaton and Keely's story to challenge your ideas of a future career too. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.